Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Master of Orion, Conquer the Stars. Maybe they're not showing that right now. With me, Get Daved. I'm very excited to be doing this. We gave it a little preview during early access, but now we're gonna play the game for real, because it's launch day. And six years, 10 months, and 29 days ago, I recorded my very first Let's Play, which was Master of Orion 1. Some, you know, some uh, exciting stuff, I guess. Michael Dorn's going to explain all the races to me if we let him, which I will not. Ooh, we can do a custom race. Yeah, let's do that. So this is where we get to pick how we want to win the game. And really, we're going to pick how we want to wipe everybody out. And you might be like, oh, he's just trying to sound badass. Here's how it works. Most of these games, most Space 4X games, they have an interesting way of blowing up other ships. That's kind of fun and part of the gameplay. And then a boring way of making treaties or getting research. That's, you know, really just serving blowing things up. Maybe less so the treaties. Either way, the game is to conquer the stars. So that's what we're going to do. That said, getting a little bit more research. No problem with that. A slight production bonus. These are all kind of boring, though. Let's take a look at some of the ones over here. Okay, trade is good. Not going to do a ton of that, though. That requires other people. Okay, so this gets us a starting tech and artifacts. So th that could pay off in the early game, but it would dissipate pretty quickly. Also, in the super early game, you only have one planet, and you basically want to just be cranking out... Uh, production, because you got to build all your colony ships there until your other sh planets get the, you know, get running. So, if you have an uber planet that's non-Terran, by default, everybody needs a planet that's like Earth to be happy. But if we, you know, have access to other biomes, we can have other planets that are really good too. So, we might do that. Uh, uncreative sucks. We won't play with that right now, even though I think we're only going to go on normal difficulty. Mm-hmm. Shapeshifters is a little tempting. I'm okay with not having starting technologies. Usually that's a Something I'm willing to give up. Ooh, cheap ships! Yeah, we sort of have the choice of, like, pumping up some sort of ship characteristic or just making them cheaper, and I think we'll go that way. And after all my bad-mouthing on artifacts, we might be forced to sneak that one in as our bonus. Now, you know what? We're going to do one of these interesting ones over here. We'll do... we'll get a text message right at the start of the LP. Subterranean is kind of tempting. You can also terraform your planets to change their biome. Yeah, we'll do... we'll do Plains Dweller. That sounds pretty great, and... Gives us a starting tech? No. Give ourselves some beam defense. And leader name. Big fan of Alexander the Great's work, but thanks for spreading democracy across the, the planet. Okay, we're going to talk galaxy shapes real quickly. Cluster is not one, like, dispersal pattern of stars. It's multiple clusters. 
So there's pockets here and there, and they're kind of isolated from one another. It's an okay setup. Spiral, you may be familiar with as the shape of our galaxy. So that's something to look forward to. And circle, now I have a beef with circle because it's kind of donut shaped, as in the middle's cut out. And this game has star lanes. The problem with that is, uh, can we adjust that? Okay, so star lanes just mean you can only move to close by stars, basically. There's no flying way across the map like you could in other Orion games, at least not very easily. There is a technology you can get later that improves your navigability. Six years, 10 months, 29 days. There we go. Feel free to join me. We'll go with Spiral, I think. Uh, just so that we have the middle filled in a little bit and so that we can, you know, interact with people who aren't just our direct neighbors. Because if you're, if you get a slice of a donut that you live on, you can only really reach the people beside you and that's going to get weird. I'll just keep most of these other defaults on, I think. And we'll play against some randos. We've got all the victory conditions turned on, but we're going to... We're gonna attack everybody. We're gonna wipe people out. And try to become the master of the planet planet Orion. The human republic. Fulfilling a dream once thought impossible. All of mankind has come together as a single world of traders and diplomats, explorers and scientists, pressing toward the final frontier. Ooh. Venturing forth from their blue planet Earth, they now seek to explore. A little blue marble discover ancient civilizations and coexist peacefully with their neighbors from a position of strength and solidarity. Well, go boldly. So we are basically the Federation from Star Trek. That works for me. I must share my ideal future with all my neighbors. They will learn to heed me. I have this burden to help them. Mahu discovered. We don't know much about the place, though. We'll, we'll check it out. And let's take a look at where we are in the galaxy. It seems unlikely there's going to be a star lane coming off of Mahu. I'm going to send my ships to that warp point because I'm likely, I'm more likely to colonize there. Our scientists are eager to start. What should we focus on? Great question. We don't have anything. Generally speaking, I go for the automated factory as fast as possible. Never mind. We need the research lab first. That gives us the ability to take everybody off of research after that, because it'll guarantee us two, and then plus one per, I believe. Maybe not, maybe it's just the just the two. Later on, we get the plus per person. You'll see what I'm talking about here. Oh, cool. Pretty good research. So, food determines your population growth. You need that. Uh, it's a similar mechanic as in Civ. There's nothing really critical for us to work on. We don't need to worry about missile bases quite yet. Let's churn out a colony ship and he'll be in no rush. All right, on to the next year of the common era. There we go, Fleet B. I remember how to play this game. No information on the planets yet. Beginning of the game's pretty chillaxed. There we go. Um, oh, 
Ultra poor. I was about to freak out about how great this planet was. But ultra poor is really bad. Uh, maybe in the early game we could, you know, enjoy such a hole. Oh, wow. Note how that warp point is red, though. We'll uh, zip over there just so I can show you real quick. Still, this place is not the bottleneck I thought it would be. So, if we try to zip all the way over here... There you go. We need an improved propulsion system, is the short version of it. You can get propulsion systems that let you cross those, and let you even go where there is no star lane. Which basically turns it into the navigation system from Master of Orion 2 and 1. 3 is the one that introduced star lanes. Now we're talking. Get there and get colonizing. Hey, you know what you should do? Oh, no moves left. All right. I can be patient, but this is a really good planet, everybody. Medium. There's nothing to freak out about a medium planet. And you might say I should check out the other one next, but... I don't want to waste the turn. That little musical bit is from the very first Master of Orion game. People who made the game, Wargaming.net and their associated developers, I really do think did a good job of honoring the past of the series. I mean, nothing else really to work on. Once we have automated factories, we can make a more interesting choice, or at least a different choice. Right now, they basically can starve and die or grow food. So with that wonderful group of choices available, I choose food. Man, it's a good looking gas giant, though. I'd harvest its gases. Okay. Hit the big one first. It's also an orange star. Science tells me that's most likely to be the habitable planet. And it's not bad. We can work with that. Huttis. Oh, we could go check that out. Yeah, we'll go check that out, and we'll send the frigate back to perform scouting duty. Also, if you'd like a planet named after you, or a ship design, you specify it in the comments section, I'll see what we can do. Which is probably lots. We should be getting our technology very soon. Arriving at the Ooh. anomaly, your fleet spots an abandoned container filled with rare minerals floating unguarded in open space. You tell yourself some smuggler on the run must have jettisoned their cargo. Nobody hmm. is around. Who would do that at the first sight of an Imperial cruiser, though? Without a second thought. Sure, we thirded the size of our treasury just by picking it up. Our scientists have made a or we won and a thirded it, I guess. Pretty good. Hmm. All of these are really good techs. And as it turns out, we probably don't need to relocate that frigate, so... More fun for everyone! Oh, they have to drop back to where they came from, though. Wow, there's really nothing here. OK, 
Okay, we'll set him on auto explore now. I think most of the interesting decisions are made once we discover the last of these planets, but I'm pretty happy with what we've found so far. It definitely took me longer to find a Terran planet before. Okay, this one would be lower on the priority stack. There comes a point where you kind of want to colonize all of the ones nearby you. Um, just because it plants your flag on it and someone else might make a jerk move of, you know, just colonizing right next to where you were totally going to colonize and you don't want to deal with that awkward situation. That's a conversation you don't want to have. Oh, what about my colony ship? Oh. Well, we may have just made a huge mistake, Michael. There we go. Eight turns to get the research lab laboratory. I'm happy with that. Can we reverse this guy? Nope. Oh, good. So the planet Orion is really good. It's defended by a guardian. It's pretty powerful. So its defense rating is 1,302. Ours is one. Offense, 691. What's our frigate got? Eight. So it'll be a little while before we can take it on. Don't you worry about that. Six and two, okay. I think ships can't intercept each other, I don't think, in space, so I'm not gonna worry too much. Somehow the smallest one is a desert. Well, I'll flag it. Oh wow, we probably should explore the rest of our solar system. If that's a Gaia-class planet, I'm gonna be pretty salty. I'm gonna feel real chafed. Yeah, you just blockade that warp point. So yeah, one of the things I like about this game is it does add choke points. Um, in the original Master of Orion, and Orion 2, I'm often going to lump in with that. You can't really have a ton of strategy on the map proper because it's so easy to find stuff. Look, Cylon. This is the controller of the Cylon Quanter. I am certain we have much to learn from each other. Sure. He's relaxed towards me. That's nice. Let's go say hi. Welcome. Ugh, you want money on top of it? I find this Annual tribute. I listen intently. Okay, well. We'll uh we'll deal with that more later. We'll get our <laughs> We'll get our little UN constructed and find a way to get their sweet, sweet technology. All right. Uh, we'll do full control for now, even though I really like the idea of something that micromanages for me. One other thing, in the opening cinematic of the game, if you've played it, yeah, just go get him. Comes to my attention that he may not open fire and stuff on his own now. No, oh, no, there we go. 
Uh, in the opening cinematic, they show a pretty huge battle taking place. Good old missiles. In the first Orion, with the tactical combat the way it was, they uh, would have stacks of ships, so there would be really, really large numbers. Pew, pew. Come on. There we go. In this one, they don't have stacked ships, so the scale of combat is a lot more like Master of Orion 2, where each ship matters a little bit more. You can't have a stack of 30,000 of them, because you could do that in the other one. Welcome. But it's all good. GNN. Oh, nice. Lieutenant Barkley. You are tuned to GNN, the only network that tells you what you need to know. Bringing it to you live. Galactic News Network, the galaxy's most reputable news source. Nice. Oh, you guys don't actually have news for me. Oh, cut. Awkward. All right. Our scientists have made a new discovery. Okay, we got the neutron blaster. A little offensive. Oh yeah, you guys can upgrade everything. Really nice. This is a very useful and concise UI there, actually. Our scientists are eager to start. What should we focus on? Mm, don't think we need that yet. Xeno relations would be kind of nice. All right, we've got our corner of the galaxy. Ah, oh, dang it. All right, he's running laps. He's doing the beep test. It'll be good for his cardio. That's how cardio works. And I mean, we've got Orion nearby us. We won't be visiting it for a while. Okay, gonna make our first big change here. If we give them just a little bit of time. Yeah, technically they're starving. Don't worry about it quite yet. Give them just a little bit of time. Something good will come of it. I wonder if Soul Prime had some pollution to start off. Who knows? Now, they're going to be a little upset at me because people are starving. I'm going to choose to believe that they were building up a huge reservoir of food during that first couple, those few, first few years. Yeah, I can say the first couple. Okay, now robots will do the production for them. How it works is it's by default quadruple the cost of the building, I think, to purchase it. Oh, no. Octuple, even worse. But that ratio really improves as it gets closer and closer to completion to just purchase it and rush production. So that's what we did. And now they'll have, you know, a bit of a head start. On that note, I'm going to end this episode here. We got a pretty good balance. Colonized, did some research, saw the galaxy, found Orion. It's all pretty good. And now, I'll see you all in the next episode, where uh, fun times are going to happen. <laughs>